As a child, I did what a lot of kids do, which is go out and just play with insects. All you have to do is look at an insect up close. They're just fascinating to look at. My name is Claudio Gratton. I'm in the Department of Entomology here at the University of Wisconsin. Insects and humans have very uh, tight relationships. Most of the time we think about the unfortunate things that, that they do to us. My research has to do with what we call beneficial insects, insects that do things that we like, like pollinating crops. The ones most familiar to us are honeybees. They work really hard, they're docile, they're easy to, to work with. And as I said, we become very reliant on them. So when they're not doing as well, then we face uh, some challenges in agriculture. Honeybees lately have been stressed, so their populations are in decline, they're subject to a lot of diseases, pesticides are a big impact on them. So honeybees uh, is, uh, is one species. This is a European species. Native bees, on the other hand, are much more diverse. There's over 500 species just in Wisconsin of native bees. So using native pollinators as a substitute for, for honeybees is something we're looking at. We can put out pretend nests and then see how many of them have been colonized, how many bees come out of them, what the diversity is, and how does that vary as a function of the landscapes in which we put them. These wild bees depend on natural habitats in the landscape. The hedgerows, woodlots, grasslands in particular tend to be good for these wild pollinators. What I'd like to move towards is maintaining areas like this in our agricultural landscapes. We often think of these areas as wastelands, as unproductive areas, when in fact they're very productive. By having these habitats in the landscape, we're generating beneficial insects. One of the biggest challenges that we have actually is figuring out who is there, what species are there. Usually this works by pinning them all up very neatly and then sending them to the one or two specialists that know how to actually work with them and identify them. Very challenging to do. So one of the things that we've, uh, we've been working on is to see if we can automate this process. Basically doing the same thing that the FBI might do through facial recognition, we do it through bee wing identification. You can take a picture with your smartphone uh, of a bee and very quickly find out what it is, rather than just say, well, it's a bee. There's a lot of different kinds of bees. I usually go home and talk to my kids and I always ask them after school, what did you learn new today? And it's really fun to be able to offer the same thing. Today I learned about, you know, how bees dig underground. Today I learned about what a pollen ball looks like. I can learn something new every day.